All right, right on folks, John Crane here, and today is an exciting day. This is a shop infrastructure day. It's one of my favorite things to work on here in the shop is to come in here, get things nice and organized and tidy. And it not only feels good on a day like this, but when I'm in the middle of a project and I'm working on something and everything's just flowing nicely, I have things at my disposal, I can easily find tools. It keeps the creativity flowing in the project, the productivity, everything's feeling good. All right, as you guys can see, I love my storage bin boxes here. I got the wall of boxes. These 12 gallon clear totes, I get these at Costco. These are awesome. I have so many of those, it's such a good organization system. I also love these little cardboard bin boxes. That's great if you have something that comes into the shop, you don't know where it's gonna live. So you grab a bin box, get the label maker, throw it in a bin box and put it on a shelf. At least it has somewhat of a category that it can go in rather than just being stuck in a corner. All right, but the area that I wanna focus on today is this shelf right here in particular. Now, I love my bin boxes, but at the same time, this isn't helping the workflow. I have in these boxes electrical wire, I got like service cable, some phone wire, but these aren't things that I need readily at my disposal when I'm working at the bench right here. This is a great shelf that's in hands reach. This can have tools and supplies, things that I could grab quickly. So this is a perfect shelf for that. All right, so things are evolving here at the shop and I'm always thinking of ways to improve the organization. And so I'm going to start right here. I'm going to get rid of these boxes of wire. And what I want to do is put some pull-out units here on drawer glides. It won't be a drawer, but it will have each side exposed. And I can have tools hanging inside or slots or that type of thing. I might build a whole series of these that go along the shelf. So what I'm going to start with is my paint supplies, the brushes, the rollers, the roller covers, all those kinds of things that that's been annoying me for a while. I've had to go dig through a box, find brushes, that kind of thing. This is gonna be great just to be able to pull this out, grab a brush and get to work. <laughs> are great. Somebody gave me about 10 pairs of these soft closed drawer glides. So this is what I'm going to use since I got them for free. Now this might be better with some short AccuRide drawer glides if you're going to do it. But since I have these, this is what's going in. All right. So here is some more John Crane chicken scratch. So if we're looking at this from plan view from up above, it's going to be 25 and three quarters wide, our box. It's going to be 24 inches in depth and I'm gonna have the divider off center. So on this side of the box, I'm gonna have all the paint brushes hanging on hooks. And on this side of the box, here's a little sketch of kind of how that will look. So on that side of the box, I'll be able to slide in tray liners, a paint tray. Here's the different rollers. And then this is gonna be roller covers that I can put in here. So, you know, the nine inch roller covers, the smaller roller covers. All right, so I'm gonna make this box out of three quarter inch plywood. So what I've done here is I've laid out how I'm gonna cut that sheet. It's always nice to lay this out before you head over to the table saw. All right, so I got everything laid out on here, and these will be the slots where the dividers go, right? So this will be where 
our tray liners go. This will, will be where the liner goes. And then this will be where we'll put the roller, so on and so forth. So I got this laid out. So here's the bottom. And then this is a mirror image. This is the top. So I'm gonna cut these slots on the router table. So I'm gonna go set that up. in this 3 16 inch bit. I got it sticking up a quarter of an inch. And so I got these two parts that are mirror images. So for the slots, I'll come in from one side like this, then I'll grab the other one. I'll come in from the other side. By the way, this is a wood shop space I'm working on. This is a project in the works. So I got the table saw going. I got the chop saw station. Got a couple band saws and the drill presses. And I'm getting this figured out a little by little. I'm, uh, you know, dialing this section in, but just show you guys around the space here. I still got to do some insulation up in the top. So it's a little cool over on this side. All right, here we go. Here is our bottom, here is the top, and then here's our back piece. That will go just like that. Here's our divider. That will go right there. And then here is the front. So we'll have our partitions here. We'll hang paintbrushes here. And then here in the front, I'm gonna have some paint brushes that I hang along the front. But this is almost ready to assemble. But before I do, I wanna put some edge banding on some of these pieces before it goes together. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, this is how I like to do the edge banding. I do it on the end of the table saw and I can use the fence as a backer. And edge banding is just essentially a thin piece of veneer. And it almost has like the same kind of glue that a hot glue gun might have on it. So what I do is I, I pull out a piece and I cut it a little bit long. I just crack off a piece and I get my iron, right? Grandma Georgina's old iron there. Get that nice and hot. And then I hold this on the edge, grab the iron on its side. And then I start moving slowly. Just right on down the edge here. And every so often I come back and I push the edges a little bit with the iron. Keep working my way down. Give it a little extra press. And then I even stand it up. Give it a little press like that. And then to nip off the ends, I got this little guillotine type tool. So you slide this over. 
That cuts it off nice and flush. I come down, I cut the other end off. And then I use this edge band trimmer. And I rarely, if ever, use this thing all together. I usually pull it apart into two halves. And you can see there's just these little cutters here. So I just do one half at a time. And one, take an extra pass, flip our piece over, and then now just lightly come over with the sanding block, remove any of the hot glue that's come out. And there we go, there's some nice edge banding. You know, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but it brightens up the look a little bit, makes it look good. to do a little assembly. I put some layout marks on all of these pieces. So here is the back. And then here is our divider. And then our front will go right there. But I'm gonna start with this back piece. And you see I got a line drawn right here on the back ready to go. So I'm just going to hold this in place with a couple of nails. And the nails are just holding this in place so I can put in some screws. The screws are really going to do the, the work. these dividers, I think we're looking at 11 and 3 quarters fat. So here's what we're looking at. We can put our liner trays in there. We can put our paint tray there. I want to be able to put this roller in. Maybe it slides over something like this and then you push it in and this handle, maybe there needs to be a little support right there. And then I'm going to do a couple mini rollers. So one here, one here. So I have to build a little shelf that this one sits on right there. All right, and then these guys, I like these kinds of rollers. So I'll have another divider right here, and this one can go up top. And then this six inch hot dog roller, this can go in here. And then this is gonna be for stacking up you know, the roller covers right here. And then this end one will get these size rollers down here. But what I have to do is I have to block these all out. I have to build some inserts that go in there so these don't push 
all the way back in there like that. So they're all right out at the front. All right, I think the method here is just to glue this to one side and not glue it to both so I don't have to insert the whole unit as one big thing. But they will just hang on to one side. And I think this is a job for the 2P10. So... be able to just insert this yeah exactly just like that right into place awesome you guys are thinking this is such a deluxe paint center i'm going a little overboard with this whole deal but this is what i'm thinking now you know this project is evolving and things develop as i'm building it so i think right here in the front i'm going to have some of these paint brushes on hooks so i can easily grab those and then over on this side i'll have some of these artist brushes lined up and i can quickly grab those but then I started thinking, ah, they'll probably start getting dust on those. I want to keep those clean. So now what I'm thinking, I'm going to put a rail on the top and the bottom, just like this. I'm going to cut a dado in here, and I'm going to put this piece of plexiglass in there and be able to slide this back and forth. So I'll have a little compartment right here on the side for those brushes. I just threw a knob in a drawer. Yeah, I think I just threw it in this little junk drawer right over here. Let's see. I 
exactly. This guy right here. Huh? Looks like I'm gonna have to tap some threads. All right, I just checked this hole and I could easily slide a number 29 drill bit in there, which means an 832 tap. So let's see here. See if I can get this nice and straight. Okay, I just made a video on tapping a straight hole and I'm not following any of that nonsense. I'm just winging it. I really like these spiral gun taps and now I'll follow it up with this bottoming tap. Now I'm gonna drill some holes in this block of cedar for our Salvador Dali paintbrush holder. I got a bunch of these hooks, but these were designed for a slot wall where it hooks it in. So what I've done is I've cut that section off on the bandsaw, and now I'm putting these into the bridge port here and just drilling a hole so I can mount these to our paint box. these hooks and I, I cut these hooks down on the bandsaw. All right, so this size brush, this one, double these up, our small guys. Awesome, I think that's gonna be great. Let's see if our, yep, we clear. All right, here's our little side compartment for the brush storage. So I got these laid out and I can sink some screws here. by the way, are great. These are nail files. It's just sandpaper. You can get this on Amazon by the hundred, you know, just order a big pack of these. But these are great for getting into little spots and for doing your nails. <laughs> goes. Now I'm not using these drawer glides in a conventional manner. So we'll see how this all goes together. Hey. 
With the soft clothes. Nice, nice. <laughs> Look at this action. That is pretty cool. Not much room to spare up there, less than an eighth. That's great, I can reach in here. All right, here we go. It's time to fill it up. I thought this was gonna be a one day build. It actually ended up taking me two days. Well, almost two days. All right, we'll get our big supply here. Just like going to the paint store. I got a bunch more brushes, but I just don't know where they are. I think they're in a box lost somewhere. All right, now for these ones in the front, the easy access brushes. Now for our Salvador Dali edition brushes here behind the bulletproof glass. <laughs> nice, that is great, I love that. You know, I know there's not a tight seal over here on the edges, but I think that will do a great job of keeping the dust down. Now for our roller section, we got our, our tray liners. Let's go right there. We got our, our paint tray, the big nine inch roller. This slides right there. A couple small hot dog rollers. A couple of these guys. There's our six inch hot dog roller. A couple of those at the top. Nine inch roller covers, some adhesive rollers. And over here, we got our, our six inch stash right here. Now, it might be good to put these in plastic, but right now, I think they look pretty good like this, but I'll probably take these out, put them in the plastic so they don't get any dust on the But Holy cow, look at this. <laughs> I am, I am digging this. This is great. Look at this access. And then when I put the other cabinet, Next to it, the next one that I make is gonna be about holding tape. That's gonna be cool. And that will slide right up against this. That might help to seal out any dust from getting in there. Soft clothes, gotta love it. Has a little bit of a diving board action there, but I think everything is great. Cool. <laughs> All right, I think this is totally awesome. All right, very cool. I'm glad how this worked out. You know, it doesn't cover everything. I did miss six inch uh, tray liners, that type of thing. That would be nice to have some smaller trays in here. It doesn't cover all the bases, but it's a start. And I think it's uh, a big leap here in organization here in the shop. Some people might think this is ridiculous to have this in the shop, but I think it's totally cool. I'm gonna put it to a lot of use and I'm, I'm really stoked that I made this. All right, well, that is it for the paint supply storage extravaganza. I hope you guys enjoyed this build. There's lots more of this coming your way as far as shop organization. I'm gonna build one that holds tape on and on and on. There's so many different things in here that I need to work on. And the whole wood shop next door, I gotta build all kinds of shelving and storage and that kind of thing too. So the list goes on and on. All right, I hope you guys are great. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all soon. All right, right on. Oh yeah, like, subscribe, tell your friends, all that. Notification bell, whatever, you know, you guys know the drill. All right, right on.